Hi, this is Matt Gill, and I'm here today with Skylar Potter. Uh, we're going to talk about some fun stuff. Welcome to the Weekly Relapse. Work is out. You are listening to the Weekly Relapse with your host, Skylar Potter. The day is done. going on junkies thank you for tuning in to another episode of the weekly relapse i'm fucking kicking it with one of my favorite people on the planet maddie i'm gonna call you maddie that's what maddie, i call of it. course everybody calls me maddie you know that shit what's going on buddy man how you been i haven't seen you in a while i've been good i've been uh in and out of town i've been uh working on uh setting up several tours uh for festival season for a lot of festival gigs uh been going to flying out to Los Angeles and New York and stuff where we set up the tours and recently I've just been I've been uh, traveling I've been actually driving up to Colorado Springs because we got this one uh, airplane hangar that uh, that they were setting up you know the entire set for the tour in and everything like that and that's cool on man. the way back on the way back from Colorado Springs and we're stopping and in uh trinidad you know what i'm saying everyone's you know having saying? a good time over there oh yeah good times uh for those who don't know maddie is probably without a doubt amarello's if not the like in my opinion the world's greatest sound guy. that's, that's how i know you you helped us early on and when we first started doing comedy uh, for those who even went back as far as listening to the yellow city comedy podcast that me and tristan used to do we talked about the cloud nine show that you man, you guys built that stage. Yeah. Y'all put yeah. the that was so epic. Yeah, we, we yeah we we wrestled that together and everything, but that was a that was a great fucking show, man. I, I still remember that. That was that was a wonderful show. It was the tallest stage to date that I've ever <laughs> been on. <laughs> like it was, it was so. Yeah, it was it was uh it was like a full five foot stage. I mean, we were way off the fucking ground. Yeah, you know? I was look. I you look. You're just looking down at these people and like that was uh. Dave Chappelle said it best, and that's whenever he says it, it's the this that's the show I think of. He's like, y'all don't know what it looks like, but when you get up here, y'all motherfuckers are just like, yeah, just smiling and like, staring. It's, it's like, like eh. yeah, just like looking at me, and like that's the show I think of because I was like lifted, man. Lifted. I'm like, they're yeah. literally like necks up looking at yeah. me. I was like, fuck, this is yeah. scary. And we had to, and and we uh, instead of putting steps on the side of the stage, we had a we had a, a, a ramp on the side of the stage, so y'all were running up there like fucking rock stars. And yeah, shit. no, awesome. and then we had the we had the walk on music, and yeah. everybody had different colored lights that yeah. uh, coincided with what they were either like wearing or like the song. That yeah. everyone everyone's shit was different. Yeah. Prince had just passed away, so I was wearing some bright purple mm -hmm. pants for Prince. Yep, yep, I remember that. Man, yeah, and now uh, you help you you're just helping out Leftwoods, right? Doing yeah, their sound. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I've built uh, systems at uh, several places here, here in town. But uh, I, I, you know, I've, I've, I've done that in the past. But uh, now I'm just working, just doing stuff at Leftwoods. I re, I rebuilt that whole system from from the ground up and everything. And and I'm, you know, taking over all the front of house duties. And whenever I'm in town, I have a couple other people that get up there and and work you know and and mix and everything but mostly on the weekends whenever they book the the bigger bands and yeah. stuff uh I'm I'm in there um I'm at front of house doing the band I'm excited about the art scene and Amber like whenever I first started doing comedy man it seemed like it was crazy for me to think that like there's oh there's a little bit of an art scene in Emerald because yeah. that was new to me then. Oh yeah. And now man it's so it's huge. The art scene is yeah. huge man. Uh my buddy Parrish is a uh, tagging up all over town mm -hmm. like and it's not yeah. like he's sneaking out at night and doing it. it's like dude they're paying these gentlemen right to do these badass doing like these murals, and murals and stuff I've, I've seen them around town and the, you know some of the stuff that some of the stuff that some of the guys that you just think are you know off the street taggers they're doing some beautiful intricate shit man uh they tagged up they brought in people from out of town there's a there's that wall right by your house yeah. Right by your house with the yeah. carnage and the venom. The car yeah, oh yeah, that's that's fucking cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got to meet. I was I was actually watching them tag that. Like right. I was there. I got to meet the guys from out of town, really? Vivo and stuff. Uh -huh. There's actually I, I won a little train behind you, yeah. and uh, he he tagged that up. The guy who did the carnage and the venom 
tagged his little name on there. Very Vivo. cool. Vivo. They had this whole thing going on. They did our. My, I work at the Music Box Body Art yeah. Studio. Yeah. They did all that in Dragon Ball Z. Uh-huh. Parish. Uh, he knocked out Game Quest. That Game Quest wall. Mm-hmm. It's huge, and it's like all those cart. Uh, like not cartoon, mm-hmm. but game character like Mario and stuff yeah. like that. It's yeah. just insane. But yeah, that one that's by my house on the other side. Bro, of, it's so of, sick. Uh, the the uh, motorcycle shop is. Uh, yeah, that one's pretty dope, man. Man, that one's crazy. Yeah, no. It's so. I, I can't draw, dude. No, I, so, no, I can't either. <laughs> like, I like you see I these can guys barely draw a stick figure, you know? and they're not, not they're not going up there with like a like I can barely fucking trace. You know what I mean? No. And they're just like, all right, hold on, and they look at it for a second, right. grab some paint, put a different cap on it, shake it, and then boom, like they're right. knocking out murals or, and like portraits. Like there's live, there's like colored portraits on like the eight hundred six walls. Yeah, oh, yeah, and they oh, look, yeah, it's they're like looks cool. like a picture. It's crazy. Uh-huh. I'm just excited to see uh, that the. Um, like I said, the art scene's blowing up. Um, my girlfriend's sister, I'm glad I said that right. Sometimes I'm like, my sister's girlfriend. Like, my just, sister's you know, girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend's sister, Lauren Dennis, just got a, they, she purchased the art, art studio over on Paramount, kind of by uh, where Randy's Music Mart used to be. Yeah, by yeah. Hummers. Uh-huh. Uh, I believe it's called 2740. Right. And they hold, they're holding art classes, and people are showing up to, like, they'll post yeah. pictures of, okay, we're painting this one at 3, and we're, or like 11, and we're painting this one at 5, or whatever mm-hmm. times they are. Mm-hmm. It's a, I think, twenty dollars a thing to do, and they give you yeah. all the paints and stuff. I believe. Right. Don't quote me on this. Yeah. Um, but I know Tuesdays. I believe it's Tuesdays. Once again, don't quote me on this. But there is <laughs> a certain day that they do like you can get both classes for twenty bucks, right? And you can paint both these paintings. Like the that headdress right there is one mm-hmm. of them, the ones they did. This owl up here is one of the ones that she did. That's pretty cool. Yeah, she's a phenomenal artist. Yeah. But you, uh, I, I'm impressed because like you, the like okay. Amarillo, yeah, you're like, oh man, you're a crazy badass sound guy. But dude, explain to these people some of the people you've had the privilege of working with. Well, I mean, uh, the the uh, I started out back in the day. Um, you know, I went to I went to I actually got my first degree here uh, at Amarillo College here in Amarillo. I got a shout like out. A, I got a uh, uh, my bachelor's degree in uh, technical theater and then I went off to Dallas and I went to school in Dallas the Art Institute of Dallas and I was a studio engineer for for about five years and uh, I worked uh, down there down there in Dallas I did uh, did Cowboys from Hell I did the Damn. That was one of the first albums I, I did. Was uh, the first Pantera album. I didn't even know that. You didn't know that. I didn't even oh, know yeah, that. I thought everybody. Fucking oh my god! I, anyway, fucking, I love Pantera, that. bro. Yeah, everybody loves grew Pantera. up on Pantera. Yeah. And then, like, um, I mean, you can't. I don't. I don't listen to them a lot nowadays. But. Right. But uh, uh, I did uh, you know the first Pantera album, and I did several uh, several uh, just you know the the album would be recorded in different places, and we'd come in and mix it at like Dallas Sound Lab. In Dallas, or at uh, at um, you know a, another studio called Summit Studios, it isn't there anymore. But uh, um, I have you ever heard of Trip and Daisy? I haven't. And, okay, well, Trip and Daisy, it was a they 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 blew up um, pretty well on on the scene in Dallas. I, I mean, and then they were they were national they were a national band, and then after they broke up, uh, the lead singer. Um, started uh, the Polyphonic Spree. I don't know if you've heard. Of it. I've heard of them. Okay. I, I, anyway, I haven't but, jammed them personally. Anyway, but uh, Trip and Daisy and um, that's a cool name. Yeah, <laughs> that's a cool fucking it, name. It was yeah, it was pretty cool. And I uh, did some work on some of the Toadies stuff and, and and everything. But album work and then also doing uh, it was in this, in this studio called Video Post and Transfer where I did uh, uh, audio post production for uh, video and television and film. And stuff where you come in and you know uh, you do what's called the looping and everything where where if somebody's out on on you know if they shoot the film and everything and they can't hear the person's dialogue out in the field or something like that they come into the studio and everything and redo redo the dialogue and then cut it in and everything that's crazy and to also, think about fo- and also foley which is sound effects and everything anyway but i did that i was on that for about five years and then i got an opportunity uh, with Shoko, <clears throat> which is a, a Dallas-based uh, live sound production company, to go work there, and um, I worked there in the shop for about two years. And my first tour out was my my first tour was uh, ZZ Top. What then, the fuck? Right, 
<laughs> yeah, and I was like six seven. I was like the dude on the deck rolling the cables out on tour. You know, I was like the low monkey on the totem pole. Right. Because, I mean, even if you've got experience in that in in that uh, in in the field as being a recording engineer, you still it's like starting start in a kitchen, bro. Yeah, You're gonna start washing that's right, dishes. You start washing. Yeah, but I started out uh, with them, and then uh, whenever I came off the road about three years ago. Um, and got my place here and sort of settled down. I came off the road after two years with uh, uh, Nine Inch Nails and Queens of the Stone Age. See, that's the one I was aware of. Yeah. And I, I, dude, I love, like, yeah. Nine Inch Nails and Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, I've worked with, uh, I've, I've worked with uh, Madonna and Elton John and, uh, and uh, Barbara Streisand and uh, you know, <laughs> Paramore and... That was that. I bet that one was yeah. cool. Oh yeah, it's very cool. What's the uh, like? Do you have like a crazy like? You don't have to out anybody, but is there like just a crazy experience that you've had like meet? Well, whether whether it be like like oh my god, I'm meeting this person, or, or ZZ Top throwing TVs out of windows, like well, any, it, it, anywhere in well, the middle. Well, I mean, there, there's there, you know, there, there's crazy stories. I mean, you know, I met, uh, I'm, I, the 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 uh, first time I met Keith Richards. Um, you know, and I, I worked with the Rolling Stones a whole bunch, but the first time I met him, I was like, holy fuck, ah, like just it's fucking boy. Keith Richards. I was like total fanboy and stuff like that, and freaking out. But, uh, but the biggest one I always tell people is, um, uh, uh we were at, uh, Madison Square Garden and I was, uh, I was at front of house and it was on one of the Madonna tours and, uh, I'm standing up there and, uh, uh, you know, she's up on stage and, and we're doing the rehearsal and everything, getting the getting the monitor set up and that's got to be like so that. surreal. Yeah, it, it it really is. But we're standing there and I'm standing behind the board and I guess that she was pissed at the monitor engineer or something, and she fucking comes off the stage, you know, in, empty arena at that point. But she comes off the stage and comes all the way back to front of house and takes an audio technical wireless mic and and breaks it over my fucking head <laughs> she did she fucking busted it over my head yeah and that i mean so dude what's it like to be inside madison square garden and it's fucking empty it's well it, it, it's you pretty just, neat i mean it, you know it's it's uh it is kind of a surreal feeling to have the entire set up and all the lights and everything and we're running through the show cues and everything with all the lighting and, and some of the pyro and some of the you know effects and stuff like that. And we've got the full sound going and everything. And there's nobody in the place. You yeah. Know, there's like there's like ten of us. And so you you you're almost getting to just watch this for. Like, oh yeah. You're just getting to experience what these oh, yeah. guys are going to experience. But absolutely. It's a work. I have to imagine. Like I I know for sure for you, it's like a work of passion. Oh yeah, it is. So it, like it absolutely. Is. So like for me, it's like if I write a joke. And like mm -hmm. it, I literally write it, and I don't have to tweak it at all, and mm -hmm. it kills on stage. Uh -huh. And the, and like I don't feel like I need to do any work to it. Right. It's like that's like that's ideal. It rarely happens. Oh yeah. But yeah. so I bet whenever you nail a show, especially for someone on the level of Madonna, oh yeah, or Nine Inch mm -hmm. Nails or someone like that, when you nail it, that has to be just yeah. euphoric almost. It, it is euphoric, and and also I mean not only not only that, but but like uh, you know I I I, I basically. Uh, practice my 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 small show skills like like you were saying at Leftwoods and everything and you know all the shows are good. I always enjoy what I do. I always enjoy you know setting up the band and getting them tweaked in and having a good show and having everybody you know seeing the crowd coming in and really enjoying it and everything like that. But it is a real euphoric feeling even for me even in a place like Leftwoods. Whenever there's a band coming in and they're they're fucking killing it and the crowd's really digging, it, that's a euphoric feeling. And even even like whenever you guys come in and you're doing comedy and there's a good crowd in there, yeah, that's and they're fun. laughing their asses off, and I'm like, this is you know this is really good because you know all the people coming together and everything and, and enjoying it. So I love I your really face whenever uh, whenever someone they're not completely they're like, why is the mic feeding back? Right. And you're just looking at them like, put it fucking closer put, to your mouth. Yeah, put it close to your mouth. <laughs> Asshole. Yeah. It yeah. always cracks me up. Right. Every time I see that. Because, like, now, like, if you're in the room and I hear, I just, like, I look for you. I'm like, where's he yeah. at? Where's he at? Where's I want to see this. Yeah. And people coming up to me, people coming up to me and, and you know, saying, saying, there's a little bit of feedback. And, you know, and I'm, I'm like, look, I heard it 10 seconds before you did, motherfucker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm the guy sitting, I'm the, the you're like, one I knew guy it was here, coming. I'm the one guy here in, here, in this place that is doing the critical listening, okay? So I heard it before you did. 
I uh, that was one of my things though. I was really scared when I started comedy. I think I've talked to you about this too. I was scared of uh, looking like an idiot pulling the mic out of the mic stand. Yeah, I, I didn't. So I went before I ever got on stage. I went and I bought a mic stand. I believe it's still at your house. Yeah, it is. I was actually, <laughs> actually on my way over here. You, you've got your stool and your mic stand that are still over at my house. I was going to bring them over. I forgot to grab them. Uh, but I bought that and I bought a mic. I did, and I made sure to plug an XLR into it. So mm-hmm. I knew what it felt like, yeah. and I I practiced my set in my house over and over, mm-hmm. and I I removed that mic a thousand times, yeah. and then I also was watching other comics. How did they hold it? How close to their mouth yeah. was it? Right. And then uh, so before I ever went on stage, because I didn't want that to be what made my set go bad. Right. I was yeah, really absolutely. really worried about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you 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 know as well as I do that 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 you know even your your craft, what you do, you know, doing comedy. There's a lot more to it that that you find that that it's you know it's not just getting up there and fucking telling jokes and stuff like that. You have to work out your patter. You have to work out your your stage presence. You have to work out your movements. You have to you know your hand movements, how you walk, where you put your hands, and stuff like that. And you know so there's a lot more to it. And so so whenever you you are practicing with the mic and everything, you have to know that element of it. So that you've got it down pat, so that it's not something that that, that breaks your rhythm. Or I was even telling you know? Tyler Valentine, he's a new comic coming coming around, and he's super yeah. super funny, yeah. and he's hella confident. That's oh yeah, I, oh yeah. I, 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 I go... saw Tyler last night, and we were talking about that that he that he came on the show. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. So I, I hung out with him last night. Give me one sec. I'm gonna go quiet my dog up. All right. Uh, but what I was saying is, I told I told Tyler Valentine last night, man. I was like, dude, with your confidence level, if you if you can manage to sit down on a stool. And not look uncomfortable, you're gonna own the fucking room. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. The, like that that was a big milestone for me. Was uh, I want to sit down on yeah. stage? Like uh-huh. it was. It I saw. I think I was. Uh, I watched Chappelle do it with the uh, on the Bird Revelations, mm-hmm. uh, and I was like, man, I really. That was just such a power move. The way I watched it, I was like, this right. is epic. So I, next time I was on stage at the 806, I made sure to get a stool. I brought it up, yeah. and I was, it was such a good – Like I, I had my hand out on the mic stand. Yeah. I was just like – and it just seemed chilling. like I was kicking it with a, a group of friends. Right, yeah. And me yeah, doing that, that made me a stronger – where, where Chappelle did that one where you – know, because he did those two dates. Uh, I think one was in New York and one was in Texas or something like that where he did the stand-up where he's walking around stage and then the bird revelation. I saw that one where he's sitting down on the stool and he's just like sitting there chilling. And I mean, it was a... Yeah, that one was at the Comedy Store Oh, okay. in uh, L.A. Mm-hmm. That's like the, the world-famous Comedy Store. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the owner, Polly Shore's mom, right. just passed away just recently. Just passed away, yeah, I saw that. And then, uh, dude, Anthony Bourdain, that, that killed Tyler, oh, man. God. Like, yeah, I, I have a I, bunch of chef friends. Yeah, I, I was... You know, I woke up uh, the other morning and saw that he had died and everything. And then I went up to Leftwoods later on, and I saw Tyler, and it was just, ugh, you know, because I mean, Anthony Bourdain was—he I mean, was a real Renaissance man. Is you know, in, in addition to being being a chef and everything, he was a real Renaissance man and everything. And so he was a, you know, he, he was. Uh, 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 influence on a lot of different things. Here. Yeah. So, so, but I mean, uh, me, I saw, I actually saw Tyler that day and everything, and he was just, you know, put See, out. By I have it. a buddy who works. Uh, he's a, he went to a culinary school, man, and he, he's a chef now, and like, you're running restaurants and stuff, and like, I, I just knew immediately, and like, that's what sucks nowadays too. You see something like that online, first thing you go is bullshit, and then you have to start googling, and then you're like, oh fuck, man, it's real. Right. Like, yeah. It, well, that. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that I was gonna I was gonna talk about today. Whenever it talks about the the media and everything, I mean, these days, so many people, you know, they 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 take something that they see online at face value and everything. And whenever I see something that's like that major, like Anthony Bourdain died or, or or something like that, I check like six news sources before I even you know, before I even start to believe it or something you yeah know, you have really, to yeah and like me and my buddy were talking about this the other day like we watched the internet become a thing especially like me and him you know what i mean oh, like yeah. yeah like we like it It was fresh like whenever i was old enough to fuck around with shit it was there now oh yeah and um so but it when i was doing a book report back in the day you googled some shit it wasn't even google then it was oh, like yeah. ask jeeves or something oh yeah 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 that's, that's what you wrote down dude mm-hmm. you know what i mean and now you try to google for a book report you right. got a deep google you got right. like yeah. 12 sources you got to fact check uh-huh. everything because 
I can go in and I can make a website. I can type up an article. Mm-hmm. I can make it look official, and I can lie my ass off. Oh, yeah, and nobody's going to do anything about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm the same way because you know I mean back you know back in my day you know I'm I'm I've I've seen the the internet from its from from its infancy from its birth and everything and. You know, back in the day, we did book reports. We had to go. We actually had to go, go to, to the library. library and stuff like that, and look it up in the books and everything. I mean, in my house, we had a set of Encyclopedia Britannica. Dude, you know? I feel so <laughs> bad that now when I think of like a, I think of a library, I'm like, this just, I don't, I don't. I don't need to know anybody who's in a library. Right, I know. The, li- <laughs> yeah, like, I don't the need- library. The library is is. Uh, uh, it seems is, like it's going to be like homeless people. Homeless, homeless people go to jerk off in the. In that, in that, the, that's the how you see it. It's like <laughs> for some reason for I think there's drugs there. I, I don't know, know why. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it's like yeah. <laughs> what if that's the place to score? Like that's, that's right. like that's right. dude. No one would think yeah. about that. You like, yeah. I go over and go. You know, let's meet at the West Side Library. That's West Side Library. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go buy some crack at the library and and. Check out a couple of Jane Austen books. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, they have DVDs now. They have DVDs. I've, I've heard, and this is just rumors, they might be getting Blu-rays. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, uh, but yeah, like, dude, just everything. It, we live in such a wacky time. Like, I, I look at, I don't know if it's just because I was born maybe like five years earlier than, like, if I was born five years later, maybe everything would make sense to me right now. Right. But, like, I'm in this weird level. Like, I don't. Nothing like I'm like why should I, like, I don't know, dude. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, I I was. Everybody I can was, share their opinion. Yeah. Like right now, if someone hears this, they yeah. can contact us. Right. And they can tell us their opinions on it, and they yeah. they can shit all over us and then block us, and we can never say anything back to them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was like I said, I was, uh, you know, I was born into a time to where I've seen, you know, I've I've always been sort of on the bleeding edge of technology and stuff to where. You know, I've seen stuff uh, uh, come along. You know, when I was a little kid, we were, you know, ordering uh, reel-to-reel and eight-track tapes from Columbia House and stuff. And and you know, I saw that come along, and then I saw, you know, the 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 birth of uh, digital media and stuff. Dude, I've, I've purchased I stuff out of Musician's Friend magazine. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think that's even a thing. And it's probably just online now. Uh, d- well, yeah, it's yeah, it's online. I mean, every once in a while, I get. Uh, I, I, I get uh, like a little circular that has like the sales and stuff like that. I get get uh, from musicians' friend and stuff, but for for the most part, it's just it's an online. online. It's an online thing. Uh, CCS magazine. I used to buy the skateboarding magazine. Oh, yeah, that's, uh-huh. it's probably. I, I I tried to order it the other day. I don't think right. it's a thing. Yeah, it's not even a thing. That's so crazy, man. Like uh, I think it's toxic though. Uh, like part of Facebook, like it's yeah. na- it's gross. It's, yeah, it's getting really. You know, I, I go on Facebook and everything, and it, it really is is kind of moving sort of to a toxic place where I, I go on there and everything, and it just seems like that that with with everybody posting like negative stuff about their lives and about about you know how sad they are and doing these memes that are that are just you know just downtrodden or something like that. I feel like that that it's it kind of electronically brings down society you know there's a lot of else really down, you know? funny and insightful stuff on there yeah. but there's also a lot of like murder videos murder videos <laughs> and yeah shit i don't want to yeah. see man yeah i like scroll down and stuff like that and i'll see these vi- you know these videos that are blurred out and the words on it are, is, yeah. is like this video contains graphic content or something and i'm like i don't even want to fucking i'm i'm, I'm kind of thankful that they covered the videos yeah, now no. because I, I i right i've seen suicides that, oh yeah and, and like nate bargetti says it best he's like facebook is like it's it's like he's like twitter's basically like famous people yeah. telling you that you're the worst right and then yeah. facebook's more local it's your friends telling you that you're the worst you're like the you, worst so like yeah. you wake up and it's like you want to see a murder video and you're like right. no i don't no. i just want to see whose birthdays it is right. you know he's like well we already started playing it so we already started playing this murder video yeah so. and like it's real man it, yeah. it, it sucks yeah and then like uh and then you get in trouble like you post something that you think is funny yeah and, and it's clearly people... a joke dude right it's like if you go through my facebook feed i don't know unless it's something like where i'm like Hey, you guys want to do this? Mm-hmm. You guys want to do a podcast? Make sure to come to the show. Right. Make sure to go to this benefit. It's a great deal. Something yeah. like that. Check out this new podcast. Right. I don't put anything serious. Yeah. Like, I've know. never been like, here's my real thoughts and opinions on yeah. something. Right. Because when you do that, first off, I don't like being vulnerable uh-huh. like that. Like, I'm not going to open myself up yeah. for gunshots. You right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. 
but you post something funny and dude, like you get attacked. You can't call her that. Like first off, I, you, know. I made her up. I, I wrote this story. Yeah. I made everything about that yeah. up. It's a yeah. whole fake story. Well, it's it's the whole it's the whole thing about the about the context that it's all you know it's it's like written words. So there's not any you, you can't like like write into it any sarcasm that that is sarcastic. It's like yeah. for example, a couple of months ago, I can't remember what it what it was about, but you wrote something. About, I'm pretty sure I know about, what it's about. Yeah, I, Lincoln I, Park. Yeah, it yeah, was something like that. And I wrote something snarky, and it was like it was like this whole thing that that, that and then you I hit weren't you. you weren't understanding the context. Yeah, I hit I you had. up. I, yeah. I, I I I was like, are we good? Right. I, I didn't yeah. mean to. Offend. It was that yeah. Chester Lynchington joke. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That and and I was like, yeah, we're good. It's you know, it, it's all supposed to be lighthearted and and everything like that. And it's you know the whole too soon thing, but that that's how. And I think a lot of shit gets blown out of proportion in the fact that it's just the written word on Facebook or Twitter. Or, and they're like, or we gave Instagram you emojis. Or, You're like, yeah, but I feel right. like I kind of feel not like a man whenever yeah. I'm putting like five happy five, laughing five faces. Happy, yeah. yeah that's like it kind of takes away from what I'm trying to do here. Right. So so you can't really read into the, the, the sarcasm that somebody has or, or something. You have like to that really know their personality. Yeah. It's like absolutely. one of those things you just have to you have to be on board. You have to be like, I, I'm, and you can't even be 100% certain. You have right. to go, I mm-hmm. assume that I, he yeah. was taking this, like, he said that as a joke. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have to assume, because I know I know the guy. Right. I don't think he'd honestly come out and be like, whatever horrible thing that right. he said that as, like, a joke. Yeah. Um, but, like, Hollywood, man, and all that stuff, like, it's just, you can't, dude, you, every, everybody's, no one's safe anymore, right. man. Yeah. No one's safe. I watched Joe Rogan's podcast with Tom Papa last night, mm-hmm. and at one point, he tried to make a joke, and like I'll say the joke, and I'm going to feel bad saying it, but he, he literally goes, I can't remember what they're talking about. And he goes, if you do that, there's a name for you, and it starts with F and ends with T, and it rhymes with faggot. That's, that's exact, <laughs> it rhymes with faggot. And then, and then I knew it was a joke. <laughs> Tom Papa knew it was a joke. Right. Joe knew it was a joke. Joe. And then you saw his face change immediately. He's like, I probably shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't. And yeah. they, had, they, had to get, they had to literally talk about it for 20 minutes about – To talk it down. Yeah, right. to, to show that they, yeah. they weren't being serious about right. it. They, they were just, you know, they were trying to, to you know, just, just do humor, but, but the, the context and, and not being able to actually see somebody's face and be able to see, you know, the fact that they're being sarcastic or they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're just being lighthearted or something like that. And then you, you know, you have to spend 20 minutes explaining it away that oh, I didn't really mean. That. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I and then it's a fucking joke, you know. And see, I, I wanted to, I've, I've wanted to make jokes like that, and I'm like, dude, there's no way I can get away with it. Yeah. There's no way I can get away with it because, yeah. like, that the only reason he's able to get away with it is fame. Right. You know, like, yeah. Like, like and not not necessarily what he said right there. I'm just saying like certain things that he has said in the past, like on stage. Yeah. But. You actually want to talk about some stuff like that, like about Hollywood. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of wanted to, to, to get into that. It was um, – I, I, I wanted to talk about uh, this, this recent thing about, like, uh, Harvey Weinstein and all these other uh, men that are, that are uh, getting – you know, all these – Women are kind of coming out of the woodwork and saying, you know, saying, oh, well, this happened 15 years ago or this happened or, you know, he grabbed my ass or, or he said something that I felt was appro- inappropriate 15 years ago. And now yeah. I'm, I'm coming out, I, you know, I'm, I'm coming out with this information. And it's like and a thing. movement, dude. And, yeah, and it's a whole, that, it's a whole movement. Is it just me? Is it and, only like, it seems like Hollywood, not musicians. musicians. Right. It's like it's it's, it's like it's, film actors, right? It is or it's, producers right. and stuff like that. But the I mean, and and it's and it's people that you wouldn't even suspect of it. I, I saw the other day um, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. That, Jesus. That's what I. That's what I was saying. I was I, I was like, you know, Morgan Freeman. Maybe he's you know, there's some weird shit that might come up. But Morgan Freeman. I mean, somebody accusing him of doing something. That that's just really weird, and and. But I you mean, have to say that we only know Morgan Freeman from on camera, from on camera. edited, right? Like yeah. it's been everything is yeah. on purpose, right? Like, there's no there's and, no like Morgan Freeman yeah. podcast where right. he said some creepy shit on you know what I mean? True, true. But I mean it's. But it's and, it's and that I, was a hard. I don't want to. I don't want to downplay. I I don't want to downplay. You know, if if a woman, or 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 anyone if is a, yeah. is felt. 
vulnerable or felt threatened or felt uh, something like, like that by someone who's famous and because that person is famous that they, they almost feel exerted obligated their, exerted their power over that person that's that's a bad thing that's horrible that, that, yeah that's a horrible thing and everything or if you but, got roofied <laughs> or you got roofied or something like that but the thing is is that i mean i was even thinking about this the other day because you know we, we've been talking about me coming on the show uh for for a while uh okay let if if we're going to talk about true equality if you if you accuse someone of uh of something that they did 15 years ago that was you know that that you didn't say anything about it because you're you know you were a, a young actress or, or something like that or anything if you're going to accuse uh somebody of something like that um did you hear that yeah that was weird that, of a pop, that was weird um so if you're going to accuse them of that and you're going to make it to where they are tried in the court of public opinion because they're going to be on the front of People magazine or the National Enquirer or Time magazine or on all these blogs or, or on the Internet or something like that. Everyone's going to know 20 minutes uh, after you say it. Yeah, so everybody's, everybody's going to know it 20 minutes after you say it. If you if you as a female actress choose to come out now. Now that, that if you were a, if you were an unknown actress back then and now you're an A-list or something like that, okay, since you didn't say since you kept it quiet, are are you gonna are you gonna give up your Oscars? Are you gonna give up the 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 rate and pay from like you got paid back in the day? You got paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a movie and now you get paid twenty million or something. Are you gonna give all that money back? Well, do you think that there's, they were scared to come out? Like, for like, let's say specifically the Weinstein one, because there were so yeah, many. Yeah, there were so many. There were so many. Were so many. And then the, like, and that guy, who knows, man? Like, I, I know. first off, I, don't even, I didn't even know who he was until he this didn't. broke. I okay. didn't know. Right. I didn't know. Like, I still, to this day, am right. not 100% sure if he's like an actor well, no, or if he's, he's just he's a, a bankroller. He's, he's a bankroller, but, but he's a, he's a he, film producer. So he, he has, like a, a, he has his own studio. Right. Well, the, I mean, there, there are several movies. I mean, Are they called like Weinstein Productions? Wein, Weinstein Group. It was called the Weinstein Group, and I mean it's the W. And I, I I'm sure I've seen it a thousand times. Yeah, you've probably seen it a thousand times, but but I, I can't also, remember right off the top of my head uh, what movies it was and everything like that. But yeah, he had a basically what was considered a production company and everything. You know, the the production company is the people that. But see, the, the, my, everything together. my point of view on it when it first happened, like not wine, like now this, I, I said we were talking about wine scene specific, specifically, but whenever I first heard about all the allegations, um, and it, my, I noticed that everybody in America was acting completely shocked about mm -hmm. it, and that didn't make any sense to me because right. I was like, dude, every single one of us has made a casting couch joke in right. passing. I know, yeah. Like, whether and, it be in a locker room or like yeah. just to like to one of your buddies, haha. Yeah, it's look. not, it, it's not, it's not an issue that that. That it's, people are unfamiliar with. I mean, it, it's been that way since they started making films. And see, uh, you know? but so like I understand it's disgusting and it's horrible. And you're right; I don't agree with it. it. Shouldn't happen, right? By any means, it shouldn't happen. But to say that you didn't, you, I had no idea this was happening. That's right. A little outrageous but, because we all fucking knew it was happening. But 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 the the accusatory nature of it, in in, in and of itself, and the fact that that. You know, some guy can be, you know, riding high, think he did his job right. Maybe he went to a couple of parties. Maybe he was a little drunk, and maybe he said something to a girl that that she felt was inappropriate. But, but she, she probably didn't, didn't even think it was inappropriate at the time. At the time and everything like that. It was 15 years her, later when the, he got accused yeah. and he had some money in his pocket. But for her to go into an interview and be able or, or be able to, to be on the Internet or something like that and her accuse some film producer or director or something like that and then they immediately get you know the negative light shine on them that's i feel that that's unfair and see because, and because let's like make I said, a, it's, it's, let's, let's make a very important distinction here we're, we're talking about like cat calling and inappropriate yeah. speak yeah, not yeah. rape like not they, rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy deserves absolutely. to burn in hell yeah, forever that, that's why i preface this whole thing with with yeah, if there's if there's some film producer that was like taking some starlet in the back and like holding her down and 
you know, hurting her or, or you know, forcing her against her will, that's that's terrible. Yeah. I, I absolutely don't deserve believe to that. go to prison but, for but sure. If, you know, I mean, but like if you're like, hey, girl, and, you trying to come home with me tonight? And, and, right. and then 15 maybe, years later, she comes she out comes and says that that was oh, offensive. Yeah, yeah. See, that that's that that's not right. You know, I and mean, then like and they, at some point, I don't know, man, like it, it's just weird. The whole the whole the whole thing's weird. When you look at it from like an out, like our perspective is we we only get what the media is telling us, mm-hmm. yeah. and I think that's your point. Like, he, right? They're yeah. not really getting to come out. They just have to apologize. Uh-huh. That's the rule. You come out and you apologize, right. and you just eat that bullet because yeah. you do. You probably do feel bad about it. Yeah, they're it. PR people telling them to go into therapy or go into rehab. Yeah, or something like that. But but yeah, that's that that's terrible. But that, you don't get to that, hear like, dude, we right. we had had nine shots of tequila that night. She kissed me three times, and I right. invited her home. Yeah. That's how it happened. That's, but we yeah. don't. We'll never know. We'll never know. We, that but part. he also may have been like, "Hey, listen, bitch, I'm famous. Yeah, we have no clue. Mm-hmm. We have no clue." Right. It could be, you know. And imagine okay. being that guy. Fifteen years go by. Well, you don't even remember it. Okay. Here's 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 the here's one of the points that I was trying trying to make. Okay. So this has been mostly like ninety percent of the people of the guys, men that I've seen accused of this. People like well, Harvey Weinstein. And like uh, 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 um, uh, Morgan ha- Morgan Freeman, the House and, of Cards and, guy. Yeah, what's uh, fuck? I can't remember his uh, name. Yeah. Anyway, but you know, Kevin, I'm talking about Kevin Spacey. Ke- Kevin Spacey, people like that. Okay, that's who's getting accused and stuff like that. Do you think that at any time in the last twenty years, somebody like uh, somebody like Johnny Depp or 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 uh, um? You know, any like Bradley Cooper, Bradley Cooper, say, or some, like of, any the, dime, some of the dude. young, attractive men, or something like that. Do you think that any time that they probably in the last twenty years gone to a party and been like, "Hey, baby," or, you know, like that, or hooked up with somebody, but nobody comes out on them, or right? Like that. It's always, it's always guys that that, that kind of like, past oh, their prime. Yeah, it's a, pa- past their prime and stuff like that. But you know. Nobody's gonna, you know. I don't think any women are gonna do it to. Well, to they did, they did go after Aziz, and he, he's, oh, yeah, a, they, he's a young right, fellow. Right. That that's 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 one of the things. But I was that one that one was that one was kind of weird. Right. I was yeah because the other day I was watching Parks and Rec and I, I was like yeah man they they went after Aziz. But and, like uh, I heard like I I don't know the whole story but like I I heard someone talking about it they're like yeah you felt threatened or you felt uncomfortable but you still blew him three times right no yeah you were uncomfortable but you you were still down on his dick so yeah. so I mean you know, but like that that one's weird though like maybe maybe like who knows maybe he drove her home maybe. she didn't have money for an Uber she felt <laughs> obligated I don't know you, we just don't know yeah it's yeah like like I said it's it's really subjective in you know in, in the fact of, of of what's the truth. But I don't think that, you know, that the accusatory nature of some in this day and age of, you know, a woman because of, of whatever, the, the new feminism or the new, uh, you know, thought of equal rights or something like that, that some woman should be able to say, oh, well, you know, he pissed me off or something like that, so I'm going to say some shit about him. And he, you know, they and can it's, fucking derail. Well, it's been 15 years. It's been 15 yeah. years. How much has that story changed over 15 years? How good is your right. memory of 15 yeah, years ago? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't remember 15 years ago. Yeah, I know. Like, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't even yeah. tell you what fucking grade I was yeah, in 15 years ago. There's, there's, there, there's, there's girls that, I, that I've most recently seen, uh, just, just recently, uh, that I, I, like, was in college with them, like, 20 years ago or, 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 or something like that and everything. And I'd see them, and I actually talked to a girl for, like, a whole 20 minutes. And then I realized that I had had sex with her, like, three times yeah. <laughs> back in college. And I don't even remember that shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I don't think she did either. So it was, you know, it's one of those kind of things where... Like, okay, I, I got... I, the other day at Toot and Totem, just get, I'm walking to a gas station. This girl goes, this is about a year ago. She's Skylar. Yeah. And I was like, hey, yeah. I have no fucking Fuck clue who I, she is. Oh, yeah. I get I that run, all the time. She runs up. I give her a hug, dude. I gave her like a hug like I would hug one of my best friends, right? right. I was like, how you been? I talked uh-huh. to her. Her boyfriend looks at me and goes, you have no fucking clue who she is, do yeah. you? Uh-huh. And I go, no, I don't. Yeah. And he goes, fucking commitment, bro. Right. You I hugged know. her and everything. Yeah. Like, it's, right. I, I don't yeah. remember. It's like, like, it's like I'll go down to, uh, you know, because I've been – here at least here in town 
a, a lot. I, you know, I've mixed at a lot of different clubs and I've set up and, you know, there's a lot of people that know me and I always say that there's a lot of people that know me that I don't know them, but I'll like go to Leftwoods and <laughs> there'll be like this girl that's like, Oh, Maddie, and come up and hug me and everything like that. And I'm like, I have no fucking idea who this chick is. How did I meet this girl? How do, how do I even know this girl? Dude, this just popped up. I remember when we first met, we met at Austin's pub. You were running sound up there. Yep. I showed up to do uh, like an open jam. An open j- yeah, and it, it, was, us- it was a, you know, a regular musical open jam and everything. And, and you came up and to do comedy. And we're like, fuck yeah, let's do that. And then uh, I, 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 it probably went okay. I don't really remember how it went. Um, but the next, next week I came up there to do it again. And you come up to me and you go... Uh, are you gonna say something funny, something funny this, this week? Yeah, yeah something yeah. funny this time. Right. And like, I didn't know you, uh-huh. and that rattled me rattled so fucking so hard. And, I, and I'm, I, and I told you that that I, I did that just to be funny, and I, I didn't. You know, yeah, I, I'm but, so sorry. Dude, that no, I threw but, you off your game for I that. I was like, what? Like, Who does that? <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. I was like, Who the fuck says that to yeah. somebody? Because <laughs> like you were saying it, like, like you did good last week. You right. needed to knock out some good shit too. Good. And I, I heard. Right. Last time sucked, bro. Are you actually gonna do something funny this yeah, time? Yeah, I was. You know, I was actually complimenting you. Yeah, I was like, that was, yeah, that was really awesome. I, I still what went you up did and, last week and everything. And I still went I, up, but it took me like two hours to get up. I like, know, and it threw you off your game. And I just, I was like, I was like, I, I remember coming up to you and saying, I, "Look, you were good last week. I really dug it." You know? I, yeah, I, yeah. And I was trying to get you back on your game. Because, I was like, I'm sure I just look like a deer in the headlights yeah, up there that like, night. Oh. oh my god! And that, I think it was the same night that someone threw ice at me. Yeah. I just saw it like arch over people and it landed and slid right up to the stage and I finished that joke and got the fuck out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well that, you know, uh, you know, like Dude, you Austin's pub was... is a different place. Oh, Did yeah. you do that new sound system up no, there? No, no, no. It's not not me. That all that all that is is somebody else. I just heard it bumping while I was, while I was just walking by the okay. other day. I haven't been in there in a long time. Right. Well, I, I just heard like it just sounded loud as shit. I didn't know if there's a band playing. I didn't go in, so I don't know how. Right. How like I don't even. I guess they probably have a new stage or something from they, what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, well, you remember? By. You remember the the stage was built into the corner. Yeah, up in that corner, uh, they tore that out and they put the stage all the, oh, along. That's a big uh, completely that's across. Kind of big. The, yeah, but you can put so a full. It goes, full it goes band wall up there. to wall. Yeah, oh yeah, you can. Yeah, we used to put full bands up there, but now it's a lot more. It's a lot more comfortable. Dude, I want to go to. I want to play Golden Light real bad. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that would Golden be awesome. Lights, yeah, that's a good gig. I mean, yeah, that's where Stanhope yeah. played, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That was did you get to go to that show? I didn't go to the show. I was out of town for that one. Dude, it was so cool. But I saw your picture with Stanhope. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. He uh it was funny because his his special had aired on CISO two days before he was in Amarillo. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't and he's a once it's out there, it's out there kind of right. guy. So yeah. and, and that's what's crazy. I refused to watch it. Because he was going to be in town, and I was like, I don't right. know if he's going to do the, any of these jokes. I don't want to ruin it for me. Right. So I'm going to go watch him, and then I'll come home and I'll watch the CISO special. Yeah. And um, yeah, dude, he didn't do any of them. He uh, went up there with a the clipboard, and he basically emceed his own show. <laughs> he would go up there, and he would run a couple of bits off of his like legal sheet. And, right. Like, she shit on Amarello for like the first ten minutes. He's on stage. He's like, I thought I was in Lubbock. Right. I'm in fucking Amarello. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just. And, but yeah, he'd go up there and do like. 10, 15 minutes of stuff, so like try out mm-hmm. some new material. Right. And then bring up a comic. Yeah. And he emceed his own show. It was so cool. That's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. And then I felt bad. Uh, I guess his, either his wife or, uh, the, or his manager's wife, someone like that, they they drove down with them, and they're going to fly back to Bisbee the next day. Uh-huh. And they came solely on the fact that they wanted some of that green chili stew from uh, – from Golden Light. From Golden Light, yeah. and uh, it was it was out of season. They only uh, make it during the winter. They, they're like, we're gonna start making it in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so she came down for nothing. Uh, but yeah, I got to see so many good comics. Andy Anders, uh, Junior Stopko was mm-hmm. one of them. Yeah. That dude's hilarious. Yeah. Of course, my dogs gonna start barking again. Dude, that sucks. I don't know. I will never buy another dog. My like, I have one dog in heat. That guy wants to get. He just wants to get laid so bad. And then I have a third dog who is old and grumpy and fights both the other dogs. Yeah. So it's like they all have to be separated all the time. Right, yeah. I was telling you that I've got um, a, a cat at my house. That, that I have to go deal with this one sec. Yeah. Dude, I feel bad for him, man. I really do. I've, nev- I've never been in a position where I was like... I wanted to get laid so bad I was in tears. Right, no. Like he's, he's just like, in there uh, crying. He's just uh, uh, he won't give me some pussy. He won't uh, eat. Like he's yeah. lost weight <laughs> over uh, the last week because he won't eat. 
Uh, he's almost like eat my food. Right. Like I dare you. Like like you know what I mean? Like a like a mm-hmm. like a tiger waiting for a fucking a gazelle to take a drink from the watering fountain yeah. or the watering hole. It's like like oh, just waiting for her waiting to put her head it. down. Yeah. She's just gonna jump on jump her. Jump on her. Well, I mean, are you considering cutting his fucking balls off? I want to, man, and every time I have the money, I end up going like, ah, fuck it, dude. I'll just go ahead and pay the back pay on Sudden Link or whatever right, the fuck it is. Like that. Well, there's a if you go to the, I think it's the ASPCA website. They've got a thing where you can download a coupon where it's only forty dollars. Oh, dude, I'll do it. I'll, I'll yeah. man, I'm gonna take. A, I'm gonna take them both in. Yeah, taking the one that's bleeding and the one that's horny. I'm taking yeah. them both. I'll take, yeah. Uh, yeah, just go to the... Two for the price of one, basically. Yeah, basically. Shut them all up. Anyway, but I was talking about my cat. I've got a cat that that's that he's in heat, and he fucking meows all night. It's like, meh, meh, meh. This has turned me off of... I'll never buy another dog. I will <laughs> never buy another animal because of this shit. And, like, it's it's way more frequent than you think. It's not yeah. every month. <laughs> you yeah, know what well, I mean? I mean I, you know, I've been over here... I've been over here several times, and your dogs are usually pretty fucking chill. So yeah, but dude, he's you know. he's laying at the door with his nose underneath it because she's in the kennel across from the way, and he's just barking at her. You can hear it. I'm sure the listeners can hear. Oh it. yeah, yeah. And, and like uh, he's doing this shit at three in the morning. Right. Um, he kept opening the door to go try to fuck with her at night. So like every time he'd open the door, I'd wake up. Right. But yeah, I'm actually just about to go on a bike ride. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> just. You know, they're like, don't shake the baby. Yeah. That's, that's, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm living that right now. Living like, don't it, yeah. fucking don't unleash on your dog. Right. right oh, man. Geez. I think we're going to have to call it, dude. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll play a song. This guy's. it's going to be Echo, you guys. I'm just going to play something real quick. We can do another one later tonight if you yeah, want as well. Cool. We can yeah. pick it back up. We can do that. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the same one, comeback season. You guys make sure to go check this guy out. His, you have- his new album just hit. Uh, I think he has a bunch of pre-orders. They already went out and everything. He's personalized them, signed them. Is you guys Echo? look, yeah, Echo on. Uh, you can find this dude on YouTube. You can find him on Instagram. Hell, a good rapper, super funny guy. Check it out. I used to have a fear of heights, but I kind of like it up here. It's nice. I've been at the bottom so long that I started to run out of real sense of right, yeah I'm glad that I didn't, stuck to my guns and now I'm all up in it Took a minute, I'm back from hiatus and ready to get down to business Woo! So you can take me out of the game but I don't care at all I hit the ground before so I ain't really scared to fall And if you didn't have my back when I was fucking up I got a poster on me on your wall then you can tear it off See I just been hoping I wouldn't come back but everyone knows that I do not break out of stopping my focus I'm coming back for all the y'all that's my moment ain't no cheat codes I'll be busting right through Kick that depression no kick it with you Learn some new lessons I lost something too If you cool with the old me you don't know the new Everybody get a little ego when you started on top and you're not doing well Don't nobody know how good it feels when you get a little heaven and you've been through hell I've been making music, trying to do it for the kid who never had another chance, trying to fit in Maybe they ain't cool to anybody in the school, but they forget about the shit really bond when they listen Made the decision, it's my religion, I'ma do me, I don't need your permission I know they talking about this like it really ain't shit, but I don't think you get it Ball in my hand, I'm not dropping it now They talking around, but we going up and I'm not coming down so hand me the crown, battle these demons, I'm killing them all Building a house where I buried them all Taking them out and I don't need a reason Yeah, it's comeback season Comeback season I just been dreaming and thinking about killing them Comeback season I just been dreaming and thinking about killing them Killing them, killing them I just been thinking about killing them Killing them, killing them I got a crew for the fans that die hard And they ringing the bell It's comeback season, I'm Johnny Manziel Killed the old me cause I had to But now it's been weeks and that body is starting to smell Everybody asking if I'm really about to blow Am I really gonna make it big this time or so? Am I gonna fall apart and keep it in control? Got some plans and I'm really trying to keep it on the low I know that y'all just been thinking and hoping and praying I fall on my face Got you all up in my business But I am an astronaut, give me some space Act under pressure, Deadpool shit Maximum effort, lately I felt like I'm falling But know that I'm always gonna land in the center 
Give it a minute, I know that I'm getting a minute. The feeling I'm about to win has got me feeling like time with a pennant. Thinking a minute's anything that I've done. This isn't making a difference, man. I know the song is a hit when I pin it. Living it up like I'm seeing my last days. And got a crew full of fans that die hard. And that's the squad about to fill the front page. Not the graves in the backyard. Ball in my hand, I'm not dropping it now. They talking around, but we going up and I'm not coming down. So hand me the crown, battle these demons, I'm killing them all Building the house where I buried them all Taking them out and I don't need a reason Yeah, it's comeback season